So recently I've got a lot of questions regarding Neo Batchy Swap Infrastructure System and how Neo as a company will be able to monetize this through energy arbitrage, through Batchy Swap as a service and through swap fees that you pay every time you utilize the swap infrastructure. And how that monetization would mean for Neo as a company in terms of valuation. And there's a scenario in which in two or three years time when the fleet size is doubling from the current 1 million to 2 million cars, Based on that 2 million fleet, NEO swap infrastructure could make around half a billion or so in net profit every year. And if you apply a 30 times price to earnings ratio on that, that's a 15 billion market capitalization, which is interestingly enough, a couple billion higher than the current market cap. So there's a scenario in the future with a fleet size of 2 million, where NEO would be justified in terms of the valuation based on the battery swap infrastructure only and without selling a single more car. Obviously, they will sell, you know, millions of cars once we go into 2030 every year. But yeah, that's a really like food for thought, especially for the bears, I would say. So let me go through this graph for you. And you can see here that the white lines show Neo other sales, things like battery swap fees and energy and services. And the dotted white line is the cost providing those services. Then you have the green lines that shows the swap station network itself, which grows over time. The first thing to notice is the relationship between revenue and cost. Early on, they're almost together. That's because utilization is low and depreciation per swap is very high. Each swap is effectively paying for a large piece of infrastructure that hasn't been fully used yet. As time goes on, revenue accelerates while cost grows much more slowly. And that widening up is the margin expansion. It's not coming from raising prices, remember, it's coming from efficiency. Swap stations and batteries are mostly fixed assets. Once they're built, the margin cost of additional swap is low and the depreciation gets spread across many more swaps. So now look at the green normalized line at the bottom, because this is where people sometimes, I believe, get confused. And the one shows uh, other sales per car sold in a quarter. So again, you take the amount of other sales revenue divided by the number of cars you sold this quarter, right? That's one of the green lines, the one that is very volatile on the left side, you know, 4,000, 4,200, and then jumps to 9,300. And those like volatile jumps depends on, you know, vehicle delivery on that single quarter. But as, as the vehicle delivery numbers get more and more stable, like, you know, the growth rate, so you don't have this like huge, huge quarters and this really, really bad quarters, you have like much more stable delivery numbers quarter to quarter. That number also gets more stable with time as we go to the right of the graph. And the other one, the one that is, you know, much lower with the triangles starting from like 545 in Q1 of 2022, and then finding a steady state of around, let's say 300, 350 US dollar per, per quarter. That is actually, if you take the other sales per quarter, divided by the total delivery vehicles, divided by the all vehicles delivered throughout Neo's history. And you'll see that that one peaks obviously early and then slowly declines. That decline is actually expected and healthy. The denominator cumulative vehicles never stops growing. So it, every quarter there's more and more cars sold. So obviously the revenue divided by the total number of cars sold in history will go down. And as the fleet matures, the average naturally normalizes and goes down slightly quarter to quarter. But that obviously that slow down and that decline will be slower and slower with time because we find a steady state. And a good way to think about this is essentially Netflix, because if you divide the Netflix revenue today by every single historical sub subscriber it ever had, that number would also go down over time. That wouldn't mean that Netflix is doing worse. It means that the business is matured and the same logic applies essentially to Neo. What really matters is that the total other sales keeps growing. Cost grows more slowly and the infrastructure is used more efficiently. That's exactly what this chart shows. Again, the white, the two white parts, you know, Early on, the other sales was actually less than the cost of other sales. And at some point in late last year, there was a like inflection point. And since then, the model keeps continuing to widening gap on the positive side. And we start to get much more better margins for the other sales. And finally, looking at the swap station growth. So stations keep increasing steadily, but the cost doesn't explode away. This tells you that NEO is adding capacity without linear growth. And this is essentially their infrastructure scaling in a sense. So this chart shows why NEO service margin improve with time. Depreciation doesn't disappear necessarily, but it gets diluted by more and more like swaps, if you would say. The fixed assets gets used more efficiently and the recurring revenue continue to grow on top of the expanding fleet. And essentially that's the core takeaway. NEO's margin improves not because it sells cars at a higher average sales price, but because it spreads fixed costs across the growing install base 
and lets the infrastructure do the work. And this is something that only NIO can tap into, not Tesla, not Xpeng, not BYD, not Liauto, not Zeker, not Geely. Neither can the Western car manufacturers like Mercedes, Audi or BMW do. So this is only NIO that can have this kind of margin expansion as time goes on. Now we can also see at the gross margin of the company as essentially the same story. Early on, like on the left, you have the blue one, which is the total gross margin for the company. And each quarter, the dotted white line, the vehicle margin was higher than the company gross margin because the company gross margin was weighed down by the other sales margin. But as the other sales start to improve and they get much, much more profitability in that part of the business, there's a scenario in which the vehicle margin actually stagnates. And this is very realistic because in automotive, once you reach that, once you reach that around 20, maybe in best case scenario, 25%, even if you sell much, much more cars, you still don't see that increase in gross margin because there's so much competitiveness in this market. So the other sales margin though, at some point will start to exceed the vehicle margin. And I think the biggest takeaway there is that essentially early on, you have very few users and you have high depreciation per swap. So margins are bad or negative even, as we saw like in Q1 of 2022 with the green part of the chart, right? But as time goes on, when we find a steady state, we have the same essential amount of st uh, swap stations, but many, many, many more swaps. And depreciation per swap collapses at some point. But you can still use the same swap stations. You might need some like, you know, maintenance, but at the end of the day, you don't need to build like so many more swap stations to satisfy the need. And that is where the like margin exceed the vehicle margin. So that is where the other sales margin starts to exceed the vehicle margin. And now the, all this like infrastructure, swap infrastructure start to become a really, really advantage to Nio, whereas previously it's been a burden. And I think like we are at, now we have seen that in some quarters they are making some margins and there are other graphs that I can show you here where the delta between them is quite interesting. You can see on this graph here that the blue one being the other sales, the cost of other sales being the white and the green being the delta. And for most of the time until Q1 of 2025, the green one has been on the negative side, i.e. Uh, they have lost money on the other sales. But since then, it started with a couple of three quarters go up on the positive side. And at some point, we will start to see this actually scaling. And that is where, you know, I think market hasn't really fully understood this segment, this, you know, dynamic. And once the market understands that, I think NEO will benefit from it, also the stock price. But yes, I also mentioned, you know, the energy arbitrage situation and the swap uh, fee scenarios. So again, if you have 5,000 swap stations, 23 batteries on Gen 4 each, then let's say you have a neutral scenario and a more bullish scenario, right? So let's say in the energy arbitrage scenario, you have like a 3 cent per kilowatt hour. It would mean that for each battery pack hour on 70 kilowatt hours, you make $2 per cycle. So you charge it up and you sell it like 3 cents more expensive to the customer. And in the more bullish scenario, that 3 cents is doubled to let's say 6 cents. And that's like essentially four or so US dollar per cycle. And annual gross margin addition would be like, I don't know, like in the lower case, 60 to 80 million. In the higher case, let's say 150 to 200 million based on again, 5,000 swap stations, 23 batteries on each station and a fleet size of around 2 million cars. And if you assume that each car is doing roughly one swap per week. Now you see the, on the, also on the, on the, on the, um, when it comes to, let's say, the actual fee for the swap, like once you go there, you have to pay a fee to do the actual swap. Then again, if you assume like we have 100 million swaps or so per year, based on, you know, one every car does one swap per week and you have 2 million cars, that's your 100 million swaps per year. In the neutral situation, more like lo less bullish situation, we have a net margin per swap of around 2 US dollar. That would be an annual margin of 200 million. In a more bullish scenario, maybe that's four, so that's 400 million. And once you add these two together and excluding the battery as a service and only looking at the energy arbitrage and swaps, you can see in the neutral situation or less bullish situation, we are looking at a to total profit of potentially 250 million or so US dollar. Whereas in the more bullish scenario, maybe 500 to 600 million every single year, right? And if you apply a PE ratio of 30, that's like 7.8 billion or in the bullish scenario, 16, 16 and a half billion. Versus current market cap as at 13 billion, you can see that both these scenarios are really, really advantageous for NIO as a company. Now, again, these are in this part of the video, I'm less more like convinced that these are the actual numbers. This was just a 
idea and uh, let's see what you you people out there think about these two scenarios do you think this is realistic are the numbers maybe way way too aggressive or maybe even too conservative this is part of the this is where i would really really appreciate your comments and uh, for next video try to change these to a more realistic but this is at least a start but again, even if you forgot, even if all of these numbers are completely wrong, we clearly see a margin expansion in NEO when it comes to other sales. And the scale is just like adding up. And I simply like when it comes to NEO again, honestly, this doesn't make sense. This market valuation current doesn't at all make sense because at 12 or 13 billion market cap compared to Tesla's 1.5, 1.6 trillion. And you then look at the both companies gross margin, as I showed you in my last video that Tesla's gross margin is give or take the same as NIO will have in Q4 of this year, or at least for 2026, Tesla and NIO will give or take have similar gross margins. And interestingly enough, Tesla only sells four, four different models, essentially, right? Model Y, Model X, Model 3, and Model S, right? Whereas NIO has like 15, 16 different brands. So somehow already NIO is more efficient than Tesla, if you think about how much R&D budget they have and how many cars they can extract from that RNG budget. So I'm really, really curious to for next year. I think honestly, like I don't want to be like the, one of these like super uber bulls that just tells you a false wrong story about how NEO is going to be worth hundreds and hundreds of billions of US dollar. But at this current valuation, this doesn't make sense. Yeah, so no matter how you look at this, for me, NEO is like super undervalued at the current state. All we need now is for the management to be really, really, you know, steady and serious in terms of not maybe doing any more missteps like the previous three or four years. So as long as as long as the management is like very cautious with the expenditure and, you know, operating expenses like SGNA and research and development, and they sure should invest money in development, but it should be to some uh, like realistic end. And if that's the scenario, I simply don't see how this company is not super, super undervalued currently. And we can start to see that this is all the way, and this is only all the way to the Q1 of 2028. Like we are already essentially in 2026 soon. I'm looking for my investment time frame for like three or four years out of time. So I would not be surprised if the revenue of NEO would be like, you know, in 2030, every single quarter, like 15, 16 billion every single quarter, right? And then probably the net income would like double or triple from here every single quarter again. So in my opinion, the valuation is just, it just simply doesn't make sense. And in my next video, I will try to actually extend this graph all the way to 2030, maybe scale down the vehicle delivery increase because at some point they will start to face really, really like the scale becomes so big that they simply will find it much harder to, to gain market share, right? At least like lower numbers, it's easier to increase your quarter over quarter vehicle delivery sales. But at some point, they will find some steady state the same way that Tesla found. Now, where that is, I don't know. But I believe that they can continue to increase their sales well into 2029, 2030 in a significant manner. So anyways, that was an update on the swap infrastructure system. And remember to comment on the, on the video regarding what's your, what your point of view is, especially when it comes to these two different graphs here. Like, is this realistic? Can they actually make give or take half a billion net profit every year? Like once the fleet size is 2 million cars, is it too optimistic? Is it too conservative? So thanks for your time and see you in the next one.